Now these are the most expensive watercolour paints I've ever bought. They're about £13.50 I think from Amazon um, and that is for six half pans. So they are about £2 um, each pan but they've been recommended to me by somebody who's on my MA course who's a watercolour artist and she has great things to say about them. So let's see what's in the pack. We've got the belly band here with um, the colours on them and the information on the back says that this is a honey based watercolour. It says that the honey acts as a preservative but also an additive bestowing incomparable brilliance and smoothness to the plate. Uh, to the paint, sorry, not the plate. So I will be very uh, keen to see how these compare to some cheaper student paints that I've been using. So if we take this off, um, we've got a metal tin and it looks like this is a mixing area. Uh, the, I have to confess that I did actually open these before and the first time I opened them, I managed to throw them all over the floor. So after spending about 20 minutes crawling around on the floor and under the desk looking for them, um, I put them back in the thing so that you can see everything that we've got inside. So we've got here a leaflet and I'll have a look at that later. And then this piece of plastic is covering the paints. And there are six colours. There's um, a Sennelier Yellow Light, um, Alizarin Crimson, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green Light, um, and Burnt Sienna and Ivory Black. Now that's interesting because actually I don't even have a black watercolour paint at the moment because I don't use it. I usually mix um, not a black, obviously, but a, a very dark colour, uh, combining something like an ultramarine and a dark brown colour, maybe burnt umber or something like that. So it's quite different for me to use a black. I don't usually use it. I do feel like it probably deadens my work a little bit to use black. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how we get on with that. So I'm gonna go over to the desk and I'm just gonna test these on a piece of paper and test them in comparison to the student um, Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors that I've been using for a long time. Okay, see you over there. So I've got a basic watercolor paper here. It's an Aquafine um, A4 De La Roni. Um, pad so it's cold pressed and 140 pounds or so 300 um, grams per meter square so it's reasonably heavy but it is quite textured. I did find this paper okay and it's quite reasonably priced as well so um, so yeah it's it's okay it's probably not the best watercolour paper to use. Um, I've, I'm using an Escoda Versatil um, travel brush uh, these were recommended by uh, Parker Blogs. I really like his um, his blog and his YouTube videos. He's an urban sketcher, so these actually um, pop down into the, the tube on the end and they're very handy for kind of taking with you. And then this is my old, um, and you can see it is quite old, uh, old watercolour set here and it's a Winston Newton Cotman student set and um, to be honest I like this I think it's um, it's really nice it's very handy I use it all the time and um, it's not terribly expensive there are lots of colours and yeah they're okay but this one should be something a little bit different so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to um, pick up some of the pure water colour from the Sennelier uh, range here and what I'm expecting is that it's going to be uh, quite significantly more pigmented which it absolutely is um, than the Windsor Newton line. Um, obviously Windsor Newton they do do an artist or professional level watercolour as well so this is a student grade it's um, it is a lot cheaper. So that was just literally like dabbing my pen in that, uh, my paintbrush in that yellow. Um, they're definitely much more pigmented. So let's try, goodness. I'm used to kind of having to uh, really kind of give it some welly and get, get the pigment there. Well, that didn't pick up quite as much. Oh yeah, look at that, that's lovely. It's like a 
blood red color. Fantastic. And you can kind of see it as I'm uh, just wiggling the brush along, you know, there's still quite a lot of pigment in by the time it gets to the end of the page. Um, so let's try the thallow blue. Ooh, this is lovely. Look at these colors. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? You know, these really nice bright colors. I'm gonna see what they work like when they're mixed in a second. Um, thallow blue, mm-hmm like you um green hello green this is it's like a lime green i mean these are really vibrant colors i'm sure that um you know were you to buy a bigger set of them it, you'd get a lot more kind of the subtle colors as well these are a bit kind of in your face for my liking but we'll see how they go on when they when they're mixed but i'm sure um i'm sure they're going to be great and this one, I think, Burnt Sienna. Uh, let's just pick up a little bit more. Obviously, we're adding a bit more water to it now. It's getting a bit more watery on the page. Yeah, very nice. And they do feel really smooth. I'm just, I'm interested in how they dry as well. And this is the uh, black. I think it's ivory black, not lamp black. There are different blacks as well. Um, as I said, I don't, I'm not really too familiar with blacks because I don't really use them. So those are the, the pure colors. And next I'm gonna have a go at mixing some colors that I use quite frequently. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to mixing um, these paints now. And um, recently I've been using quite a lot of greens. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some green blue, um, which is a color that I've been using quite a bit. Oh, and that's very nice, like a nice vibrant teal color. Um, I'm also gonna dull that down a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of the um, burnt sienna in it as well. Let's see if we can get it to a, a kind of, yeah, a more natural type of green. So you can see that um, oh, I'm kind of knocking it back with that uh, reddish brown there, and it's it's making more of an olivey green color. So that's nice because we can still get these natural colors even with the um, even with the very bright pigments. Um, let's try and go for something like a skin tone because I do like to paint people quite a bit. Um, what I usually do is do put some brown and some red in there. Um, and yeah, it it's a bit of a, well, obviously we've, we've got lots of different skin tones, so it depends on, on what sort of skin tone you want. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a movable piece. So there is no white in there either. So I would normally put some, some white in it, but um, let's just try it as a very light wash and see whether we can get something like a skin tone. Well, that's very pink, isn't it? Um, and I'm wondering that with these, with these particular colors, whether I'm not really gonna be able to get a great skin tone. I'm gonna to actually stick some green in it. I know that's a bit random, but because it's a complementary color to the red, um, what it's gonna do is knock that red back a little bit, um, but we definitely don't want a green facial color, but that's, yeah, I could definitely work with that. It is quite a limited palette, this, so, you know, you've, you've got, um, You've got that limitation there really, haven't you? But uh, yeah, we can, we can certainly get some more subtle colors. Um, let's try something like a, a gray. So for that, I'm gonna mix um, a brown and a blue. Now I haven't got a deep brown in this set. Um, so it's gonna have to be the uh, burnt sienna. And there I go again, it dirty already. So the burnt sienna, it's more of a, a brown than a gray, isn't it that? So let's try a little bit more blue, but I feel like this is gonna be a very turquoisey, um, very turquoisey kind of color. 
rather than a pure grey. But um, again, it's not too bad that actually, is it? You know, quite a grey. Mm -hmm. It's all right. It's neutral anyway, isn't it? So I think I would have to learn a little bit more about these these paints and how to mix them. Uh, I definitely don't usually paint with a lot of really, really bright colours. And um, the, the friend that recommended these um, on my course, she actually does do, she, she does a lot of painting for children. So she's, um, she's definitely works with a lot more bright colours than I do. Now that's interesting, that, that purple there with um, alizarin crimson and the thalo blue, that's actually a really nice kind of subtle purple. That's um, a, a really nice kind of mauvey or something like that. It's not too bright, is it? And sometimes we get these, um, these mixes where we're hoping for a really bright purple and actually what comes out is something like this. If you can get the pure primary red and primary blue without any hints of uh, yellow in there, you, you do tend to come up with a brighter colour as well. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the original sheet that I made and I'm going to see whether I can get approximately similar colours from the Winsor & Newton Cotman palette. Now, <laughs> my palette is so dirty, so well used. And the reason that it is dirty is because I quite like, uh, you know, I do use subtle colours. I don't tend to use like very, very bright colours or pure colours at all. I always mix all my colours. Um, so the, the, the thing is, I like to actually leave it on there so that when I come to mix new colours the next time, um, I have got the old colour there and it makes it a little bit, it kind of knocks it back a little bit and makes it a little bit more subtle. So this is um, the yellow from the Winsor & Newton Cotman range, which as I said, is a student range. Now, it is very similar in tone, uh, in hue and value to the uh, Sennelier paint. However, it's certainly, um, it's certainly not as pigmented, I think. So we'll see when we, when it's dry. Now, I am not completely sure, but I feel like this might be alizarin crimson. Now I've lost, long ago, lost the, um, the, the what's it for the box of these. So it could be something different and it certainly looks a bit um, more purpley than that. But yeah, you can see again that we're not getting the uh, the same amount of pigmentation with the the student level paints as we are with the Sennelier paints. So you're definitely getting what you what you pay for there, I think. Um, and what will happen, I think, when it dries as well, is that I, f I feel like it's not going to be as smooth as the Sennelier. I think it's going to pick up more of the texture of the paper as well, which, to be honest, I'm not really bothered about. I, you know, I like watercolours. I like the texture of the paper, so it doesn't really unduly trouble me. But, um, you know, it might other people. So let's go for a, a blue from the Cotman set. Again, that's a very similar hue, isn't it? Um, but it's definitely, I'm having to work a lot harder to pick up the pigment from there. Um, so, you know, if you want that really good coverage, uh, you're definitely not gonna get it. And that's smooth coverage as much with the Windsor Cotman as you are with the other ones. Actually, I have asked Father Christmas for some Windsor & Newton uh, professional grade paints uh, for um, obviously for Christmas. So um, we will, I'll do a little test then and see. Now this green is more of a forest green, it's a lot darker, although it looks in the pan, but actually when it's on, you know, again, because it's not got as much pigment in it, it's not that much different in uh, hue to the Sennelier. Um, and let's have a look at the final one. Oh, uh, it was this one, wasn't it? Burnt Sienna. Let's see with the burnt sienna what we're doing. Oh, yeah, it's a bit more brown and not as orangey as the Sennelier, I think. Uh, so it's it's slightly different um, in that respect. Uh, and again, it's the same thing. Like I'm having to really kind of 
put my brush on it to get the pigment up. So to summarise, I'd say that the Snellia paints are definitely higher quality and you can see that in the amount of pigment that's in each of the paints. They have a smoother quality to them when you paint them on and you don't need to um, work as hard to get as much pigment out. And I think that uh, they, they dry in a much smoother way as well. So um, I'm really pleased with them. I'm going to have a go with them. And for those of you that might want to subscribe to my Patreon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bonus video up there of me redoing one of my paintings in the Sennelier paints. And for those of you that might want to subscribe to the top tier, the Print Pals level of my Patreon for £12 a month, you will get a copy of that print sent to you. Okay, if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It means the world to me um, to see you there. Comment, uh, have you tried these paints before? Which do you like? What's your favourite brand? What brushes do you like? I'm always looking out for new recommendations. And actually, I do need some new watercolour brushes as well. So if anybody's got any suggestions, please pop them in the comments below. And thanks very much, everyone. And I'll see you next time.